Good morning. morning. And welcome to worship as we begin our journey into Holy Week with the procession of palms. Before we begin, we'll be following this worship insert throughout most of the service, like over half of the service is actually just on your bulletin insert. So that way you don't have to flip back and forth between this and the bulletin. It'll make it just a little bit easier. If you don't have one of these, look on with a friend and then you can grab one inside of the narthex. And then hopefully everyone grabbed a palm branch and or one of the beautiful palm crosses as well. Those are yours to take and throughout the service, you're welcome to wave your palm however much the spirit leads you to do so all right so we'll begin today with our processional gospel acclamation found in your bulletin insert we speak together the acclamation christ humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross therefore god also exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them, They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. 
Our processional song is Ride On, Ride On in Majesty, printed on your worship inserts. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and kiddos, come on up for a sermon for all of God's kids. And bring your palms. If you got a palm, bring a palm. Alice was like, I was here first, and then I forgot my palm. I'm fine. Still You're still here first. Okay, I'm going to scooch this right behind me. We're all here right when we need to be. How does that sound? All right, does everybody have their palm? Everybody's got their palm. Whoa, I didn't know we were gonna have a, is that a cat? I didn't know we had a cat with us today. That's awesome. All right, so, oh, we've got one more. Guess who it is? Yeah, yeah, there he is. All right, where are you sitting, dude? You wanna sit here? Here, we can scooch. All right, everybody take your palm branch for me. 
and wave it. And congregation, you can do it too. Everybody take your palm branch and wave it, okay? So here's a good question. Why do we have these? It's Palm Sunday. Can anybody tell me about what Palm Sunday is all about? That's okay. That's all right. What, you know, Alice, what's it all about? You know the story, right? It's when Jesus enters into Jerusalem and all of the crowds are waving palm branches and they even put them down, right? Yeah, to make like a palm carpet. Yeah. Do you know what the people said? You know the word that they said? Remember? Hosanna. Can you all say that with me? Hosanna, right? It's a word of joy, a word of victory. And actually, this was a tradition. Whenever you had a palm branch and you were waving it, it actually signified like joy and victory and all those kinds of things. So what are we, what are we joyful about? I mean, after all, we're getting ready to journey with Jesus to the cross, a very dark time, right? What is there to be joyous about? You know, Par? Well, animals, right? We're always joyous about animals. You what? Resurrection. Easter's coming, right? That's why we can wave these palm branches, right? That even in the midst of those terrible, no good, horrible, very bad days that we have. Has anybody ever had one of those days before? I have. Everybody's had them, right? Even when it's, we're uncertain, we're scared, we're afraid, we're unsure, we can wave a palm branch, not literally, but we can wave one, knowing that God goes with us wherever and that Easter is coming, that God always promises to make all things new and that God is always with us wherever we are. So whenever you're struggling or having a hard time, I want you to remember to wave your palm branch. Everybody wave your palm branch as a sign that God is always with us and God is always in the business of bringing about new life, not just for us, but for the sake of the life of the world, as God loves us no matter what. Right, church? Yes. Amen. All right, everybody take your palm branches instead of your hands. Hold them up for me and let us pray. Dear God, thank you that even in the darkest moments, you are with us and that you promise to always bring about new life. As your resurrected people, send us out to share your life and love with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends. You can head back to your seats. The gospel, the gospel acclamation is printed on page four of your worship folder. Please stand as you are able. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. I'll invite the congregation to please be seated as today we will be reading the entirety of the Passion Narrative with a Reader's Theater. I'll invite our readers to come forward. And this is the Holy Gospel of Matthew, according to the 26th and 27th chapters. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Now while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, 
and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum, and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? She has performed a good service for me. You will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where, Where do, do you want us, us to make, make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed, and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. Surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one to have not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his, the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here. Stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So, you could not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, 
saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. Then Judas kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place. For all who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Do you not think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. And the high priest said to him, <clears throat> I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He, he deserves, deserves death. death. And they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to, to us, you Messiah. Messiah. Who, Who is, is it, it that, that struck you? you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, 
He repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What, what is that, that to us? us? See, See to, to it, it yourself. yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See it to yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. <clears throat> then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, hey, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. And they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. 
Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, Wait let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place. They were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The song of the day in your red hymnal is number 357, 357, Lamb of God, pure and sinless. Please stand as you are able. Hey. 
Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Each prayer concludes with merciful God, and the congregation responds, receive our prayer. Please kneel or be seated. Lord, church, O oh God, enable us to time and place that Jesus Christ is Lord. With the humility of a servant, equip everyone to proclaim your extravagant love for all. Merciful God, save your creation, O God, every living being. Give us renewed appreciation of farm animals who labor in the fields. Sir who live alongside us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save the peoples of the earth, O God. Restore dignity to those who are scorned and persecuted for their religious beliefs or political activism, and deliver them from the hand of their enemies. Bring peace to places where conflict runs deep. Merciful God. Save those who cry out to you in any need, O God. Watch over all who are incarcerated or awaiting trial, and stand with those who are justly, unjustly accused. Be present with those feeling isolated, lonely, or fe fearful. Today we pray for Regina Johnson, who is back in ICU. We pray for Autumn Heyman starting chemo for breast cancer. We pray for Anna in recovery from a car accident. Please restore her confidence. We pray for the family and friends of Jim Lazari, who passed away Saturday. 
And we pray for Don, Lundle Don Dunleavy, who is going to care cancer, care center from hospice. Merciful God, save us in your love, O God. Guide the work of church musicians, pastors, choirs, readers, deacons, technicians, acolytes, and all who assist in worship. Sustain them in their leadership as they accompany congregations through this holy week. Merciful God, save us at the last, O God. We give you thanks for your saints of old who embodied your servant love. As you came to their aid, so deliver us in times of trial that every knee would bend in praise to you. Merciful God, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with one another.
Let us pray together. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, holy, holy, holy Lord, God Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. You may be seated. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace, grant us peace. And now together as a community, we will partake of this feast, which God lays out for all people, First, I'll invite those who are worshiping online with us to commune wherever you find yourself. Um, if you have some bread and some wine or some grape juice, you're welcome to have that and we'll take this together. First with the bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And now with the wine or the grape juice. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And as a reminder, all people are welcome to commune here at this table for the gifts of God are free. Um, as a reminder, we'll be coming up to the rail to receive communion. And while you're here, you are welcome to either stand or kneel, whatever is most comfortable for you. And if you need communion brought out to you where you are seated, we are also happy to do that as well. So come now to the table for all is ready. During communion, we will sing number 471, 471. Let us break bread together. Let us break bread together. Oh, Lord, have mercy on 
Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Please stand for our blessing. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Our sending song in your red hymnal is number 347. 347. Go to dark Gethsemane. We sing verses 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. to dark Gethsemane, all who feel the tempter's power, your Redeemer's conflict see, watch with him one bitter hour, turn not from his griefs away. Learn from Jesus Christ to pray. Hallo to the judgment hall. View the Lord of life our reign. For the wormwood and the gall. For the pangs his soul. Sustain, shun not suffering, shame or loss. Learn from him to bear the cross. Calvary's mournful mountain climb, there adoring at his feet. Mark that miracle of time, God's own sacrifice complete. It is finished, hear him cry. Learn from Jesus Christ to die. Before we are on our way, I'm going to invite everyone to be seated. And no, I'm not giving an extemporaneous sermon, I promise. Uh, I just want to go over and highlight a few announcements before you before we depart. First off, today's service continues on Thursday. Even though we read the Passion Narrative, I don't know about you, but coming on Maundy Thursday and Good Friday adds a deeper depth of spirituality and experience to Easter Sunday. And so I highly encourage all of you to join us on Monday, Thursday, which is this Thursday. Worship begins at 7 o'clock. And then Good Friday is also Friday at 7 o'clock. So just keep 7 in your mind for those services. And then we'll join back here again next week on Sunday as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Remember, we have one worship service at 9 a.m., which means get here early. Carpool with friends. Uh, try your best to save space in parking. Uh, we, we're going to pack the house on Easter. Very excited about that. And then also we'll have a brunch and Easter egg hunt. There are signups in the narthex for all of those things. And if you are a young person who will be participating in the Easter egg hunt, please do not forget to bring your basket. Okay, because your pockets can only hold so many of those. Um, I also wanted to let you know that April is Child Abuse Prevention Awareness Month. And as always, we'll be supporting the Ralston House. You can purchase one of those blue pinwheels for $5 or however much the spirit moves you to do. And then later in the month, our Sunday school kiddos will help plant those pinwheels on the corner as a sign and show of support of all of our youth and young people in our community. And then two other things really fast. 
King of Glory, we are celebrating 65 years in ministry this year, which is wonderful and awesome. So we're going to be having our anniversary celebration on Sunday, May 28th. Mark your calendars for that. There'll be more information coming soon. And also with that, it is time to now replace the tables in our parish hall. So we are now doing a fundraiser stewardship campaign to help replace all of those tables. There's more information here in the bottom of your yellow bulletin announcement, but our goal is to have all of those tables purchased and here in time to use them for our 65th anniversary celebration on May 28th. And so thank you to all those who had already given. You can, you can buy a table outright. You can go in with friends to buy a table. There's many ways, but thank you for your ongoing support, not just of things here, but also in our community as we share God's life and love. So those are all of my announcements that I just wanted to bring to everyone's attention and I'll let Lynn lead us out today.